Hello South Africa, my name is Jared Ricketts and I'm the host of Cape Town's very first virtual cooking competition called What's in the Pot? Now guys, we're not going to just be finding out who the winner is, we've got a couple of people helping us. I'm talking about three radio DJs who are not only bringing their smiles and their voices, they're bringing their taste buds to help us find the genius with the right recipe who's going to win this very competition. Yes, brought to you by the City of Cape Town for the Cape Town Future Energy Festival. I think it's time we find a little bit more but what's happening in the kitchen? Let's go. All right, it's about that time where we get to meet our judges who are going to be contributing not only their voices, but their taste palettes to help us choose our champion for what's in the pot. Now, our first judge is known for giving delicious breakfast banter. On his breakfast show, I'm talking to Aiden. Thomas. Jared, how's it? I'm so good. I'm so excited to have you here. I am very excited. I find my judging tends to improve based on the volume that I eat. I see. And I'm seeing a lot of really good stuff that's going to go into pots. I'm looking forward to not only tasting, but to eating <laughs> quite a bit of it. Now a lady is going to have a bird's eye view of our kitchen today. Is not only the perfect condiment to any on-air conversation. She is also an amazing judge who is going to be talking to us about what she likes, what she doesn't like, all those things. Liesl van der Weesleizen. Jared, I'm going to have a giraffe's eye view. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a bit nervous being a judge. Don't be nervous. I'm sure you're going to say and do all the right things. To as long as they don't ask me to cook and I just have to taste, I think we've got a winning combination. Awesome stuff. Our third and final judge is going to bring some more spice and flavor to the kitchen. I'm talking about Africa. Milani. So lovely to be here. Unlike Liesl, I'm looking forward to stirring an onion or two. But in fact, rumor has it in the industry, you're quite the chef. I am. I'm very good. They're all true, the rumors. No pressure, guys. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so we've heard from our judges and now it's time for us to get to know our contestants and the stories behind their family's favorite recipes. Contestants, are you ready? Yeah! Let's go! <laughs> I'm Jared Ricketts and welcome to the Cape Town Future Energy Festival. And now, a word from our beloved mayor, Mr. Dan Plato. Good day, South Africa. I greet you all. Cape Town want to become carbon neutral by 2050. I support the festival. It's a very important festival in our history. We all need to begin to work together to make carbon neutral issues in South Africa a reality. It is currently a problem, a problem for all the municipalities, but also for industry. The festival will set the tone for what all of us need to do to reach our goal with regard to carbon neutrality. I am of the opinion looking at the drought, the resilience we put forward with regard to that to steer us through the drought situation. Looking at COVID-19 on the other hand, we begin now to see the end of the virus and, and, and so forth. Also, our resilience beat the virus in many ways. But the other issue we need to begin to focus on and we need to shift our mindset into that direction and that is carbon neutrality. The city of Cape Town can't not want to do it alone. We need your assistance, we need industries, we need other governments, we need municipalities to work together, we need business to work together with us. We also need the residents, the citizens. All of us is in one in this fight. I'm looking forward uh, to our plans. Uh, the city of Cape Town's officials, the administration is on board. My office is on board and all the other industries I want to call on upon you come on board with us to make carbon neutrality for 2050 a reality. Thank you very much. Hi guys, I'm Peter Nordi here. I'm the marketing exec of Crown Food Group. Crown Food Group is the home of Six Gun Grill. So I want to welcome you all here today. And uh, we are privileged to house the city of Cape Town 
Future Energy Festival today. All the best for the contestants. I am sure the one who has enough six gun in his meal will win. All the best. Uh, good day, Cape Town. My name is Kansila Sulelo Zimkita. I'm the chairperson for Energy and Climate Change. This is our very first virtual cooking show. It's one of the events that we're going to be having throughout the year for the future Cape Town Energy Festival. It is through initiatives like this that the city of Cape Town is trying to bring you in as citizens to showcase what you can do, but you can also be able to save while you are in the kitchen. What we've been trying to do as the city of Cape Town, because we've learned from the water crisis that if we try to do something, but we don't bring you in as residents, we are not going to be successful. So today we have six fantastic contestants from all over Cape Town. They're not only going to be showcasing their cooking skills, but they're also going to be showing us tips on how you can save energy and save some money in the kitchen. It's all about creating delicious meals while you're saving money. And without further ado, I would like to hand over to the contestants so that you can see what's in the pot. Thank you. Nanziwe, I see we've already hey. we've already got our tagliatelle going. We've yes. got uh, the meatballs. Sorry, how do you pronounce that name again? Tagliatelle. Oh, okay. Uh huh. We learn things every day. We learn day, things. Hey? We learn things. Cool. Meatballs. Yes, I'm uh, making meatball spaghetti, and the reason behind this dish is because I am such a huge pasta. I'm a huge pasta fan. Okay. But then because. One couldn't travel during lockdown, so I thought I'm bringing Italy home. Mm -hmm. In my home, my way, my ingredients, my style. Oh, so I'm taking. Oh, yes, I heard yes, Italy. Yes, and I'm yes. loving for this girl. Yes. Besides, so, yeah. so for this particular um, competition, so I, I decided to judge things up. Mind you. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I decided to make meatballs instead of um, the. Like the mince, the, the, bolognese. the bolognese, because I've got the balls to win this competition. <laughs> ne? Love this. So, so obviously keeping the original ingredients and then um, just sassing it up my way. Lovely, man. Yeah. I have to say this, you look like magic in Sweet this Daddy, ensemble. I am magic. So you're going to bring the magic to the food yes. so that when he tastes it, he says, this is the yes. one. And the judges better like it because if they don't, I have a problem. Well, we got a winner. Uh, <laughs> so we had a bit of spillage, and my job is to assist Juliet. Luckily, it wasn't the food; it was just some water for our potatoes. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much. No, man. it's a pleasure. What's the hardest part of this recipe? I think uh, the hardest part is what I'm doing now, yep. just uh, getting the chicken nicely butterflied, and then also um, just getting it. Um, tenderize a little um, so that it's easier to cook. Um, it just makes life easy. The other stuff um, also uh, easy to, to prepare, but this is definitely the hardest part. And with cameras in your face, it's just absolutely, as hard. Absolutely, absolutely. So Kurt, listen, you yeah. look like you've got all of this under control. I should, You are yes. busy with a tomato breedy. That is correct, yes. Very traditional. Tell, tell me so why that dish. So this is Joan's tomato breedy. And uh, who's Joan? Joan is my grandmother. Liquor Joan, yes. I remember yes. eating this on a Wednesday when dear John was mm. playing on TV okay. as a kid. So, this is a sentimental dish for me. Uh, so and it's I, exactly her recipe so you've it, tweaked it? It is, the basis is hers. I've tweaked it with a little bit of spices and then I'm cooking it in an instant pot, which is a pressure cooker. Mm. And it basically cuts the cooking time down. So that's okay. why I'm doing that. I've never met your ma, but was she diabetic? No, okay. she wasn't. Because this dish causes diabetes. They With must the put sugar. half a packet of sugar I've in there. I've got my sugar. Oh, you got the sugar. I've got my okay. sugar ready to roll. That, you can't do it, otherwise it's too sour. Otherwise it's too yeah. sour, you must yeah. just cut through the, the acid <laughs> the of the acid. tomato. There Did we it. go. So, Chantal, uh, what are you making for us today? I'm doing a beef curry. Yeah. With some basmati rice. And what's your secret to your beef curry? My secret is this thing over here. Coriander. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I, I swear you could add coriander to ice cream and it will improve the taste of the ice cream. I'm not sure about ice cream, but... <laughs> <laughs> and is this, is this a, a, a secret family recipe that you're going to be uh, doing here today? That's correct, yes. Um, you can either have it mild or hot. 
mild or hot. Okay. I prefer it more on the mild side, I must admit. I'm, I'm a, I'm a bangbuk <laughs> when it comes to hot things. So. Okay, no, then I'll make it mild just for you. Thank you. What are you making today? I am making aso ibuko and risotto milanese. That's quite a tough dish to it make. It is. Where did you learn to make this? I learned to make it at school. Yeah, and where, where did you go to school that you're making tough dishes like this? Silwood. <gasps> Silwood in the house. Mm -hmm. And what was the toughest thing you had to make there? The toughest rabbit. Oh. No, no, rabbit. Oh. And give me a quick secret. What's the secret tip about making a sasibuko? The secret tip about making a mm -hmm. It's the love. Oh, it's the love. See. It's the love that it's goes love. into it. Okay, so you're going to put me hard to work today. I am. How long does it normally take to make this? It normally takes about four hours to make the osipuko, but since I'm going to be using the pressure cooker, it's going to take about 40 minutes. Okay, done. so we're done and dusted. How, how many times have you done this dish before? With the muscles, I think only two times. Only two times? So you entered this competition with a dish that you've only done, done one done. other time. My word. My family likes pasta, but I never, we never um, use muscles in the pasta. <laughs> so this is the second or the third time I've done this. Dish. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to taste it. I think you better go in there. Yes. That sauce is starting to <laughs> shake. <laughs> Kurt, how are things going over here? Uh, good, so far so good, yeah. Good, listen, I know nothing about the kitchen. I'm a singer, okay? Yeah, of course you are, yes. I have a bit of a problem. <laughs> okay. Because the only way that I can understand things is through <laughs> song. Okay. So I need you to uh, sing to me about what's going on here, and I'll start it off and you can carry on with me. Let's okay. vibe, ne? Okay, okay. We're, we're gonna vibe. Are you addressing my contestant? I'm just trying to understand okay. what's okay. happening here, and song is the only way. Attention to detail is going on here. He's quite clean, everything. and he's got everything in its You know, individually position. browning the meat. The meat. And I feel it's a song coming on. I see potatoes in the water. And you're gonna tell me what's gonna happen next. I'm browning the meat yes. in the pot. <laughs> I've just done my onions and tomatoes. Is well, well, well. <laughs> it's looking good. I see the steam coming out of your instant pot. This is the brown pot. Hey! And brown equals flavor. Hey. And that's what I am developing now. Come on! <laughs> Oh, delicious. Oh, come and have a look at this. Oh, so delicious. That's a very clever idea of doing it between two pieces of plastic. Yes, absolutely. Why do you do it this way? Because it's easier also to, to take it out. Or oh, wow. It doesn't break there, because yes. the plastic makes it slide. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay. Because if you do it on here, it yes. sticks. And, and we need some six gun spice. So what do we need, yeah? I'm gonna put this in. So I'm gonna put a gel in it. Six grill. How much do you need? Just put about two tablespoons. Oh, am I gonna guesstimate? You can guesstimate. I was gonna use salt and pepper, but I figured we've got that just to add that extra, you know? Okay, so you're yes. judging me uh, with no, no <laughs> tablespoon. No, a little bit more, a little, little bit, bit more. more. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, there you I'm go. with two chefs here. And this spice like has got that. everything in it, herbs and spices. Everything. And you can fry, you can cook, you can oh, bake, you can stew, you can roast. Okay, Chef good spice, spice, there we go. popcorn spice, Whoa. anything. Is it for popcorn, the <laughs> Yes, okay. it's very versatile. Those are nice healthy meatballs. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Already smelling good. Thanks. Oh, and your tagliatelle looks like it's about done. Yes, um, I just need to remove it and then um, put it in a strainer. strainer. Okay, yeah. good, good. Uh, don't overcook it. It needs to be a little bit al dente. Cool, cool. Because okay. you're going to reheat it again. Cool. We're breaking away from the chaos in the kitchen to talk to a representative from the city of Cape Town, Mary. Hi, Jared. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm so good. Listen, I'm loving this concept. And what's in the pot is the competition that is falling into the belt of the many events coming to the future for the Cape Town Future Energy Festival. Can you talk to us a bit more about that? That's right. So the Cape Town Future Energy Festival is a series of family fun for events that are really designed to get Capetonians involved in the future of our city's energy story. 
Um, so this is not the only event, this is uh -huh. just the first one. We've got a great series called Smart City Kids, which is designed to bring the, uh, the concept of energy and water and waste to little children. We've also got some academic interviews with some thought leaders under the Future Energy Festival banner. And watch this space for a physical event in early 2021. Ooh, watch this space, guys. Why is it so important for Cape Tonians to know about energy efficiency? Well, as you know, Load shedding and the high cost of electricity is something that all Cape Tonians have to deal with. And this is really a chance for us to understand that we can each do something ourselves to save a bit of energy, save a bit of money, and really walk, work towards a more resilient um, and equitable future. Loving that because when I look around the room, I'm actually starting to think that I can adopt a lot of these things into my day-to-day -day living. Absolutely. So the city of Cape Town's got a very ambitious goal of being carbon neutral by 2050. But we cannot achieve this without every single Cape Townian being part of that story. So today is a chance to, for, to see that we can all do something to become a more resource efficient city. Loving it, loving it, loving it. But listen, we are in a competition and our contestants are completing their meals for our judges to taste and to judge them. But we've got to walk around the room and get our last bit of whiffs and smells and tastings in. Congratulations to you and the city. Let's go and see what they Thanks, are doing. Thanks, Jared. Smells delicious. <laughs> It looks like your meal's coming together Sun, here. Everyone. The meatballs have been placed, yes. everything else coming together. Yes. I think this calls for celebration. Yes. Do you want to do a little something with me? Oh, I must see you, my friend. Put the plate down. Let's, Let's go. get the beat going. Yes. One, two, two three. three. One, two. And this way. To the back. Yes, yes. And we all left. No way, Juliet. Listen, did you create this, like actually do this here? I did, I did, with the help of my uh, assistant, Liesl. Oh, okay, <laughs> yes. Props to Liesl. I saw with the broom in her hand, so she was actually doing something here. Yeah? <laughs> Absolutely. So, this yeah. Is wrapped up. I see cheese, I see chicken. This looks super complicated. I'm starting to believe that you are not just that novice person that's entered a competition to pretend to cook for all of us. You will be surprised how easy it is. This does not look easy. Trust me, if I did this, they would not be sure if it was chicken at <laughs> all. Okay, Walk me okay. through this process. How did you get it to this point? Well, um, we took normal chicken breasts, uh -huh. uh, cut it up, uh, butterflied it, mm -hmm. and then um, just uh, uh, tenderized it a little, um, layered some bacon, uh, spinach and mozzarella and that's it and then you just roll it up just roll it up she makes it sound so simple but if i did this it would not do that so i'm really impressed between the cutting and the butterflying <laughs> and all these things i cannot wait to taste this as well so Fantastic. golden brown Fantastic. all the goodness i'm going to move on to our next contestant to find out what she's doing Chomiami. Unjani. Ah, and you've, Konya been, and uh, you've been ignoring me, man. I've not been ignoring you. You oh. see, I know we saved the best for last. Oh, okay. So I've been watching you with the corner of my eye, and That's you've been great. vigorous at your table, jumping between the pots, so jumping cute. between cutting the meat and doing all that mm -hmm. you're doing. What's happening here? We are we in your recipe. I am making the result. You just missed me. See, now the meat is inside. It's just it's inside, and what inside. is this contraption? 
that you're using? I am going to be using the pressure cooker. Normally I use a stove, but uh -huh. I'm going to use a pressure cooker. It cooks quickly, saves energy and time. Normally it takes four hours, but with this, 40 minutes done. Done, 40 done. minutes done, so done, you done. are sticking to your time, everything sticking is happening in point. Exactly. And you don't even look stressed, you've got this glow about Thank you in you. this kitchen. Because you know you're doing some good I things know. over here. Thank you. Loving it, <laughs> loving it, loving it. I just want to ask you a quick question. You know, mm -hmm. in your normal day-to-day -day life, how are you conserving energy? How am I conserving energy? I use gas at home. You use gas, use gas at, at home, home and that's how you make sure that's that you are sure. keeping the units in check. Exactly. You know? I can make as much food as I want because I know I use gas. You know you're using gas. It's cooking with gas. It's all happening. Thank you. I'm gonna leave you to continue Thank and I'll you. see you a bit later when our judges come and taste this gorgeous meal that you're Thank making. You. Good luck and Thank enjoy. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> Three, two, one. All right, contestants, 30 minutes. 30 minutes. We've got 30 minutes. <laughs> the, the clock is ticking, guys. 30 minutes before we shut you down. Chantal, Aiden just announced that we have 30 minutes left. Is everything going according to play? Mm, not really. What's I'm wrong? I'm a bit behind with my meat. Oh no, where's the meat? I'm going to still cook the meat. Oh, okay, girl. Listen, we have 30 minutes to go, so I'm going to leave you to it. Time is of the essence. Where's Good Aiden? Luck. Maybe Aiden can He's hear? around you somewhere, but you keep your eyes in this instant pot okay. because they want to taste do. all this goodness, okay? Good luck to you. Thank you. All right. Juliette, it's been such a long day in the kitchen and I am so hungry and I've been sitting at this bowl for so long, wanted to sink my teeth into this. Fantastic. Are you happy with the outcome? Absolutely, absolutely. Great I stuff. Am. I see that you are stirring away. I believe we're at that important part of the meal where you are going to be placing it on this beautiful plate. You're just in time. Yay! So how do we start? What's your idea? Okay, so we are first going to do our mash. And okay. then we're going to plate our mushroom sauce, creamy mushroom sauce. Mm -hmm. um, and then on top of that, our chicken roulade. And then just for prettiness, some carrots and some microbes. Just say that again. Chicken what? Chicken roulade. Roulade. Yes. Listen, you, my dear. So many things up your sleep. And this is mash in here, right? That's mash. I just scooped my mash up. I don't know how you want to do this. You want to show me? Sure, absolutely. So let's start with, with let's that. Let's get started, yes. Just like that, That's it. something I could never do. My dear, this looks amazing. Good luck to you. Thank you so much. I can't wait to see what the judges think about all this gorgeousness. Thank Great you. Great job. <laughs> okay, so Kurt, I mean, it's it's all come down to the plating. Um, That's it. This would normally have taken, what, like two hours? Two hours, yeah. Three hours on a stove. Yep. You did your 35 minutes? 35 minutes and done. And, and that beef is soft? Beef is soft, potatoes are cooked through, okay. flavors developed, yeah. That's amazing. I mean, normally normally to get it soft, you, you've got to slow cook it. And, and you would need to down. stand and yes, watch that stove, make sure your heat is adjusted. Yeah, you push a button, you set the time and you walk away. 
fantastic, yeah. Cool. All right, uh, it's energy efficient, so we can take that box. What does it look like, plate the chow? Yes, yes, so normally, obviously, we would uh, put the rice and the pot of stew on the plate on the table at mm -hmm. home, but now we are getting fancy here. So oh, fantastic. we're going to plate up the rice. And now, oh, for the star of the dish. Oh. And I mean, this is this is good home cooked food. This, eh? is, I mean, this is this is a family home cooked tomato, tomato brioche, as they say. Stew. And we are just going to oh. lay some garnish over there. Hey yo, hey yo! No, 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 Fancy. that's important. So I'm just going to uh, because ultimately, you know, there's a test to make sure. I'm not going to eat anything. Yeah, I just yeah. want to see. So I mean, these were cubes of beef. And, and undercooked beef is incredibly hard. I mean, just look at that, that flakes apart. You know, so I mean that, oh, that's wonderful. And then I just slides through that potato. That's awesome. That is brilliant. Smells amazing. I can't wait to taste it's it. So we'll do it with good. the judges yeah. in a bit. Well done, Kurt, well done, man. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Thank you. All right, Nanziwe, hey. we're going to get all that fabulous food in these pots into this plate. Have yes. you got a plan? So the plan is, in fact, mm -hmm. when I started cooking, so I was always fascinated about the jargon that chefs use to describe how they actually dish out yes. their, their food. So I'm going to take a stab at it. If I die, I die. But no, I... Nobody's dying today. <laughs> so, this is food to die for, sure, but nobody's dying. Sure. So I'm going to start off with my spaghetti. Uh-huh. So I'm going to dish up my spaghetti onto this plate. Cool. Ooh. Lovely. Cool. And there was tagliatelle earlier. What happened to that? So that is overcooked. So I thought, <laughs> nah, it's not going to mm. work. Not the top impression. This I is not there. overcooked. This is very good. Cool. And then okay. I am. Um, just get this out of the way. Sorry. All right, and then we've got these Presentation fabulous... Presentation is everything for me right now. these fabulous meatballs. Oh, man, that looks amazing. Thank you. So, I am going to dish up the bolognese sauce mm -hmm. on this bed of spaghetti. Ooh. Color. I mean, that is... Succulent, right? And it just... Oh, nailed it, killed it, absolutely killed it. And then I'm going to put three meatballs on top of that. Two. Three meatballs? Yes, that's more than enough. What? The meatballs. For everybody here? Yeah. More than enough. One person can't eat that. Trust me, <laughs> they can. These meatballs are massive. And then garnish massive. that with... Look at this. This is insane. Woo! Sana, I have outdone myself, <laughs> even if I say so. Yes. I, I love it. Listen, good luck. The judges are going to be by soon. Yes. I know they're going to be impressed by this, all right? Love it. Maybe a little bit more, just. Yes. Not yes. perfect. Nailed yes. it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. OK, so it was quite stressful because you were one of the last to finish. The risotto just took forever. Forever. How are you feeling now? I'm feeling confident now that the rice is done. I didn't want to serve rice that wasn't done to my liking. So I'm very satisfied with that. Okay, mm -hmm. so should we plate this? Yeah. Let's do that. How easy is it to plate something like risotto? It's very easy because it's a home-styled meal. So you just put it on the plate. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to add. There we go, should I hold it for you? Thank you. I know you've got a specific way of putting it all together. Mm -hmm. Pop it in the middle. Oh, this is definitely Aiden's bowl. <laughs> I think one more spoon for him. Well, I'm joking, I'm joking. Uh, he likes his risotto. Okay. Okay, now I'm now. gonna put the beef shin on. Oh, look how spectacular. And the smell is unbelievable. Do that. Let me help you with that. There we Thank go. Thank you. And plating is very important when it comes to. Very important. Especially because they've got some very strict judges here. Yeah. Like you. <laughs> what is that? This is gremolata, just lemon zest, and then I've got some garlic and parsley. Mm. Chop that down, make it look. You can look. actually smell that. 
put some salt on there as well. That looks great. And it adds a bit of color as it well. It does. Pops everything up from the plate. Okay. Oh, I can't wait to taste this. Okay. Okay, here we mm -hmm. go. Our dish is ready. <laughs> Break a leg. Thank you. Sweet and sour elements come out. Mm. The curry is not too overpowering, curry. I thought. And the lemon um, brings it up. The lemon actually mm. does make it pop up. Um, she did say while we were cooking that she usually uses fresh mussels, and, and these were frozen mussels, and it should be interesting to actually taste it um, with some fresh mussels. And I like that she left some on the shell for, for the top. Mm. Um, really wow. lovely, very tasty. I'm biased here, guys. Yeah, this is, you were looking forward to this one. This is, this is my comfort food. But this is something you don't make at home anyway. Mm -mm. But also this is where you see an excellent example of mm. energy efficiency. Mm. Oh yeah. This would take two, three, four hours four sometimes hours. to mm. do at home. Full of flavor. Mm. The beef is lovely and succulent. Mm. Um, the bite, you, you want it hot. I wanted it much hotter than I asked for I mild, would... and she, she clearly was doing it for me. So. Yeah. But lovely. It's your though. fault. Uh, completely my fault. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies. And that's simply because I'm in the presence of greatness. Oh, oh, oh the judges. <laughs> what, what, what are you feeding us, Nanzi? Eh? Excuse me? What are you feeding us? What are we having? So, you guys are having spaghetti meatballs with a bit of a twist inside the meatballs. I've added cheese as a surprise element. Hope you enjoy it. Bon appetit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's Spanish, isn't it? <laughs> oh. Merci. <laughs> Merci. Oh, wait. Ita what's Italian for thank you? Grazie. Who Grazie. I do apologize. That's OK. Oh. Um, I loved, I was, I was really looking forward to the cheese this in the middle. Is... Very, that's something There's very There's so different. much going on here, guys. Uh. Mm. Wow. You're very quiet here for that. This is very good. I've so there's a mark of a good dish, eh? I've never actually seen a meatball with the cheese in. This is very different. Now, the first thing I would do, and I did indicate this to her while she was cooking, these balls are massive. Mm. So I would have done them slightly... say that again? <laughs> these balls are massive. All right. <laughs> I would have done them, I would have done a little bit smaller. That way you don't have to have them on the pot for so long. So therefore the beef and the meat will still be juicy and mm. succulent and all of that. And saves time. I love the sauce because often a bolognese sauce takes forever to yeah. do. But she, in, in the efficiency that she brought for in there, sure. it was actually quite nice. I'm surprised you could do it that quickly. And the flavors came out yeah. so quickly, oh, so nice, beautiful. so quickly. And good call on uh, changing it to spaghetti because yeah. that tagliatelle was looking a little bit dangerous was... um, at that point. So, otherwise, mm. lovely dish. Love it. This is a really great dish. The sauce. Kurt! Oh, hey! The this man is the has been singing ready. all afternoon. That's right. With uh, your hat in the kitchen. Competing with Jared. <laughs> You know, mm. to get beef this succulent in that little time is insane. That's the nice thing about the, mm. the instant pot. Mm. What that I would is. have done though, I would have loved it if the sauce was a little thicker. And a bit more tomato. But you'll find when you pressure cook, the sauce doesn't have enough time to reduce. To actually do, so. Yeah. so no, you, but so. you can actually add a little bit of a, something in to make it. To make it, but then you're adding something other mm. than tomato. Mm. Because the tomato starch. pops the corn very starch. lovely. Yeah. Um, we were worried about the amount of sugar he was throwing in there, but it actually didn't see balances that. quite very nice. Now, very interesting because chicken breast is one of those, well, chicken generally absorbs a lot of flavor, right? So adding the bacon and the cheese allows you already to start collecting those flavors. You dip it into the mushroom sauce, it just is absolutely amazing. Yeah, the mushroom sauce. Which works. Um, but also for the, for the cheese still to remain soft means it's not been overcooked. Mm. Correct. Because otherwise yeah. it just turns into a, a gooey mess. Indeed. 
It was very good. Put more clay on. We're mixing the whole thing I'm together. I'm just wanting to get all the flavors quickly. So that you oh. can see how they all work together. Mm. This is great. Very quiet on this judging table here. Yeah. Well, we need to be because the food needs to <laughs> sit on sit our up. palates. You know, risotto is a thing that can go horribly wrong very oh. quickly. And I was panicking, panicking in the kitchen there. Because we were running out of time and the risotto was taking mm. forever. What's in the pot? Cape Town's very first virtual cooking competition has almost come to a close. Our contestants have done all that they can do. They presented their meals to our judges who've eaten to their heart's content. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I believe you've made your choices. But before we get into that, I want to hear from you. What are your highlights? Aiden? So I, I, I just love the passion with which everybody cooked here today. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that was incredible to see. And, and how they, they embraced the energy efficient mantra. You know, they, they, they are different ways of cooking. And these perhaps weren't the easiest for some because these are newer technologies, d d different types of cooking techniques. Uh, but the way the contestants embraced that and still delivered incredibly tasty and flavorful meals at the end, that was top class. Definitely, definitely. And Lisa? I love the efficiency, but another thing that I loved is all of the contestants were competing for this first prize, mm -hmm. yet they were all going to each other's stations, helping out, offering advice. Coming together. Coming together, sharing tips, and I loved that. That was very much of a camaraderie. So I it was a nice the, event. I just love the fact that you were also getting your hands dirty. Yeah. I mentioned I before, was she was chopping. Yeah. At one stage, chopping, flour on the fingers. Yes. I was like, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, go, get involved. Got some go get involved. You have to, and have fun. In Africa? Well, um, a lot of ingenuity and I think uh, skill. A lot, uh, some of the contestants were really showing incredible ability to do things that would often take a lot longer, uh, need a lot of precision, mm -hmm. and then having to use, as Aiden was saying, new energy sources as opposed to do that. That was interesting. Uh, but flavor ultimately, right? It, it, what's on the plate needs to pop with flavor. And my word, we had a lot of flavor today. Yeah. Wow. Definitely. Awesome stuff. And so you guys have casted your vote. The we favorites did. have been put onto the list. Um, you want to change your mind? Are you happy? No, no we're happy. <laughs> no, we're pretty happy. Yeah. So we're now you're passing happy. that pressure on to me Good luck. Yes. to announce the winner and the runner up. Okay, yes. guys, All let's yours. get straight have into fun. it. After hours of slaving away in the kitchen, it has all boiled down to this very moment where we are closer to finding out who our What's in the Pot champion is. But we're going to start with our runner-up. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a long day and I'm so excited to announce this. Put your hands together for... Julian! Oh yeah! Yes, wonderful hamper that you've won and your wonder bag. Beautiful, yeah. thank you so much. Give it up for her, Juliet. <laughs> and now it's time for us to announce our What's in the Pot champion. Put your hands together for Nandipa! Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Nandipa! Listen, this is going to make you feel even better. Take a look at this. You've won yourself 2,000 rand. Come on! You've also won a hamper from Six Gun, also a voucher from Yappy Chef, and all of this to the value of 10,000 rand, guys! Amazing stuff, amazing stuff. And the great thing about today is that there are no losers, guys. Each and every contestant walks away with an amazing hamper from Crown and Six Gun. Yeah! From all of us at What's in the Pot, we want to say thank you for joining us and thank you for being a part of this experience, guys. So many more virtual concepts coming your way from the Cape Town Future Energy Festival. We will see you very soon. <laughs>